GTN. Gestational trophoblastic neoplasia is a uterine malignancy where there is malignant abnormal trophoblastic proliferation. Now histologically distinct types of GTN are invasive mole being the most common followed by choriocarcinoma the second most common and the placental site trophoblastic tumor, the epitheloid trophoblastic tumor, they are very rare. Now, GTN can occur after any pregnancy event, be it a full-term pregnancy, molar pregnancy, abortion, ectopic. However, GTN occurs most commonly after a molar pregnancy event. With complete moles, the risk of malignancy equally is about 15 to 20 percent, most commonly being invasive mole followed by choriocarcinoma. The risk with partial mole is much less, only about 1 to 4 percent. Now, under these clinical circumstances, uh, the clinical presentation is often with abnormal bleeding and the diagnosis is made mostly by seeing rising beta HCG levels. And that is exactly the reason why after a molar pregnancy evacuation, we are following up women with serial beta HCG levels till they normalize. And even when there is a history of a prior molar pregnancy and its evacuation, somewhere in the past, after any other subsequent pregnancy event, whatever be the outcome of that pregnancy, the retained products of conception or the placenta should always be subjected to a histopathological evaluation. And if that is not possible, at least a serum beta HCG should be done after six weeks. Now, like I told you that most commonly it occurs after a molar pregnancy where we can do all these uh, follow-up activities. However, it can occur after any pregnancy event and it is very unreasonable to follow each and every pregnancy event with the histopath or a beta HCG levels. So, when there is no prior history of a molar pregnancy, the diagnosis of GTN requires a strong clinical suspicion. Like for example, a woman ha may have recently delivered and she's continuing to have abnormal bleeding, right? The clinical clue would be that the bleeding is not responding to the usual medication, hormonal treatment or repeated DNCs may have been done and still there is no relief. Under those circumstances, suspect GTN and at least check for serum beta HCG levels. And also please remember that a GTN occurring after a full term pregnancy is almost always a choriocarcinoma. So there are a number of clinical circumstances around which you diagnose GTN. So there is a criteria for diagnosis of GTN which you should remember. Now after molar pregnancy event, we are following up with serial beta HCG levels weekly, right? So four values or more which show plateauing of beta HCG right or after a molar pregnancy evacuation a rise of hcg of 10 percent or greater is seen for three consecutive values or after a molar pregnancy evacuation persistence of hcg is there even beyond six months after evacuation so that would make the diagnosis of gta right now let's say for example a woman presents with abnormal bleeding and you have happened to do a curettage, a sampling of endometrium, then a histological diagnosis of choriocarcinoma or invasive mole is also possible. And yes, sometimes there can be direct evidence of metastatic disease directly in the vagina or lungs uh, without even established primary site in the uterus. Uh, but if there is a metastatic disease without established primary site, the diagnosis can be established with elevated HCG levels. Now, in the end, I would also like to point out that HCG is a very typical marker of GTN, particularly invasive mole and choriocarcinoma. The diagnosis of PSTT or ETT uh, is uh, uh, more problematic and difficult because they don't, uh, you know, elaborate HCG as the marker. And again, they are very, very rare.